It has been, and uh, it still is, a challenging time for education across the world. And I'm thankful for one, for the efforts of our teachers and our school staff during these uh, unprecedented times. As a parent, homeschooling has been uh, an interesting insight into what it takes to be a teacher. <laughs> and I thought I'm delighted uh, about the return to school for, uh, for our children on Monday. And uh, I don't know about you folks, but I've got fond memories of my teachers. And I've also got some not so fond memories of certain teachers. Uh, the fond memories I, I remember from uh, my crew days, uh, a certain Mrs. Fellows, whose husband had helped design the Rolls-Royce Silver Spirit. And that was a fact which uh, us young boys were just in awe of. And we loved the idea that one of our teachers was related to the guy who helped design the Silver Spirit. It was a big thing, Rolls-Royce in crew in those days. Or from my Malvern days, a certain Mr Higgs, an English teacher, whose uh, grumpy London demeanour encouraged me towards a lifelong love of poetry. Teachers can have a massive impact on us. The good ones can literally change the course of our young lives. And so it was, or so perhaps it might have been, in our reading for this morning. My Bible calls it, and in, calls this encounter, Nicodemus visits Jesus, but I am calling it a tale of two teachers. It's from John's Gospel, it's chapter three, and we pick up the story right at the beginning of the chapter. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the miraculous signs you were doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old, Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the son of man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the son of man must be lifted up. That everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only son. So Nicodemus says to Jesus, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. So there we go, first teacher, Jesus. And Jesus says to Nicodemus, are you a teacher of Israel? Second teacher, Israel. So we have a meeting of two teachers and not a staff room in sight. 
And in my day, when I was younger, staff rooms were smoky places. They smelled of cigarettes and coffee. I know things have changed. But Nicodemus arrives and meets with Jesus. Now, just to give you a perspective of who Nicodemus is, Nicodemus features a few times in John's Gospel. Later on, he comes to Jesus' defence, telling the chief priests and the other Pharisees not to judge Jesus without first knowing what he says or does. Nicodemus tells them, does our law condemn a man without first hearing him to find out what he's been doing? And then following Jesus' death, he provided the spices with which to embalm Jesus' body. But all that is yet to come far into the future. For now, we return to this meeting of the two teachers of Israel. Nicodemus, a religious and legal teacher, and Jesus, the rabbi, the teacher who taught about God's kingdom and God's heart. My, uh, my dad trained as a teacher in Nottingham, I think, and I had considered it for a while, but I, I think I made the right choice and I think the world is a better place because of it. There is training, I know, I, I looked into it. There is work, I know, I looked into it. There's learning on the job. There are hours worked at school and all that marking and the prep that happens outside of hours. Well, here we have an outside of hours encounter an outside of hours visit by Nicodemus, because it's night, not the normal office hours of a teacher of Israel. Perhaps he was afraid of being seen. Uh, Jesus was frowned upon by many of the religious elite and by Nicodemus' fellow teachers, almost certainly. But there may have been another reason. Maybe Nicodemus was not just fearful of wanting to be seen with Jesus, but not wanting to be seen taught by Jesus or not wanting Jesus' teachings to be seen out in the open. Jesus may have been teaching what they considered forbidden things, secret wisdom hidden or should be hidden from ordinary folk. It matters what we learn and it matters where we get our learning from. I mean, we can think of a modern equivalent, can't we? Think of Malala, the schoolgirl. Well, she's a young woman now from Pakistan, an advocate for female education. She became well known for her campaigning and blogging and she received numerous death threats. She was quoted as saying, I think of it often and I imagine the scene clearly. Even if they come to kill me, I will tell them what they are doing is wrong, that education is our basic right. And you may know the rest of the story. In October 2012, a Taliban gunman shot her as she rode home on a bus after taking an exam in Pakistan's Swat Valley. She was 15 years old at the time. The education of women was such a threat, but she survived. She's continued her work. She won the Nobel Peace Prize and she set up the Malala Fund to help others gain an education. Because quite simply, education can change lives. What was the teaching of Jesus which so concerned the other teachers of Israel? Well, we can only conclude it was the teachings about the kingdom of God. Jesus said, no one can see the kingdom unless he is born again. Now, I won't go into the details of the, the Greek or the Hebrew language, but the fact is that some words can have dual meanings. And this word, which can mean again, can also mean from above. And so we can read what Jesus said as saying, unless he is born again. We can also read what Jesus is saying as unless he is born from above. And Nicodemus is rightly confused. So Jesus elaborates. I tell you the truth. 
no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of the water and the spirit. These are strange teachings indeed. A rebirth from above or being born again simply through water and the spirit. And it's uh, to me anyway, Nicodemus doesn't quite seem to get it as the rest of the teachers of Israel don't seem to get this spiritual rebirth. Is it because they aren't clever enough? Well, I don't think so. And uh, I don't think this was about intellectual failure, a failure of the teacher of Israel's intelligence. Thankfully, for the rest of us, I don't think it's about intelligence. The brightest and best teachers of Israel could not grasp this. So it cannot be about intelligence. If we read on, the answer as to why Nicodemus and all the other teachers can't seem to grasp Jesus' teaching becomes clearer. It's about trust. It's about belief. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the son of man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the son of man must be lifted up that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. Jesus speaks about what he knows of heaven and of the kingdom. Like a great teacher, he speaks and teaches from experience. People have asked me about heaven, about life after death, and I've studied and I've read and I've written essays, but uh, however rough I might look on some mornings, I have not been <laughs> to heaven. I have not dwelt with the Father. I have not been by his side when the universe was created. I do not speak of what I know firsthand. But Jesus does. And this is not stunningly new teaching. It was hinted at in the Bible many times. Way back in the Old Testament, Ezekiel the prophet quotes God as saying, so this is the voice of God according to Ezekiel the prophet, I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. So there we have water, and the spirit cleansing and renewing and enabling us, what does God say? To follow. I will move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. The spirit of God is mysterious and uh, hard to explain. It is one of the hardest parts of our faith to try and explain how God's spirit can guide us, how God's spirit renews us. It's teaching, which actually simple intellect, and I don't mean intellect that's simple, but I just mean intellect alone, cannot fathom. Jesus is not asking Nicodemus whether he understands, 
but whether he believes. I'm quite a logical person, if I put my mind to it on a, on a good day. Uh, and sometimes I can be too process driven. You ask the leadership of this church. I can be far too process driven at times. And I feel for Nicodemus. But it's not his logic, which is the problem. Jesus doesn't say, oh, you're too logical. It's his lack of trust, of believing in the testimony of Jesus. I followed the US election closely. It's quite a painful thing to do. From election day, well, for weeks before election day, but certainly from election day to the weeks that followed, through the legal challenges, and I was actually watching live as Congress began to certify Joe Biden's victory. I remember Gabby sitting with me and I was explaining to her as they were doing this, this counting and this announcing on the telly, on the computer, sorry, I, I explained, I said, this is democracy. It's not always easy. It's, it's often messy, but it's the best we have. And she was fascinated. We turned it off and we sorted her out for bed. Minutes after, Congress was stormed. You know the rest of the story. Despite all the evidence to the contrary, many people simply did not believe that Joe Biden could be president. We live in a world where facts are contested, where truth is contested more so than at any other time in my life. In the end, it wasn't the, the facts that mattered. It was what people believed. And so we come to Nicodemus, the great teacher of Israel, presented with facts, with Jesus's truth. Or with the truth himself, as Jesus would later say in the same gospel, I am the way, the truth and the life. And Jesus didn't say to him, simply, why don't you understand, and leave it at that. He did, he did say, you don't understand. But he told him, actually, you don't accept our testimony. Basically, you don't believe. God gives us the tools, the resources to do what Jesus says, can happen. To be born again, to be cleansed, to be filled with the Spirit, to enter the kingdom of heaven. And here we have two teachers, two supreme intellects. One will help with the burial of the other and one will give his life it may be this morning you're saying yeah but I still don't understand and that's okay neither do I fully and I've spent much of my life studying but I believe I believe in the testimony of Jesus, enough to follow. And I think the question that arises out of the meeting of these two teachers is, do you believe? Let's pray. Father God, Lord, we're, we're grateful for, for the work of teachers in our lives and in the lives of our children and those we know. Father, we understand the, the influence, the responsibility that they have, and we understand they can change lives. But Father, as we've been looking at this meeting of two teachers, In a way, they are so similar, 
and in a way they are worlds apart. And Father, we look at Jesus, the teacher who will give his life. The teacher who says to us, we must be born again. The teacher who promises that we can be born again. Father, I pray for all of us, but especially for those who at this moment are wondering whether to accept his word. Father, I pray you will give them the courage to look at Jesus' testimony, to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and to say, I may not fully understand, but I believe enough to follow. Lord Jesus, we ask this in your name. Amen.